Many people believe that fish are a healthy food. They provide omega-3 fats and that perhaps fishing isn't as cruel as factory farming or doesn't cause as much environmental damage. Let's look at what the science and evidence has to say about this. The reason some fish are promoted as a health food is that they contain more omega-3 fats than any other species. You may have heard these being called oily fish, and these include mackerel, salmon and sardines. Other fish, such as cod, store omega-3s mainly in their liver, which is why omega-3 supplements use cod liver oil. We need omega-3 fats for our cell membranes, brain and nervous system. They also play a role in blood pressure regulation, blood clotting and have anti-inflammatory properties. And because we cannot make them ourselves, we must get them from our food. Fish contain two types of omega-3s. They're called EPA and DHA. The only reason fish contain these is because they eat microalgae producing these fats and then store them in their tissues. The long-held belief is that fish oil may help protect us from heart disease and stroke. But now, research shows that eating oily fish or fish oil doesn't offer any advantage when it comes to heart health. As a highly respected Cochrane Review put it, moderate and high quality evidence suggests that increasing EPA and DHA has little to no effect on mortality or cardiovascular health. As a previous review essentially suggested the same, the authors also pointed out that getting our omega-3s directly from microalgae is a better alternative as it reduces overfishing, environmental pollution and doesn't expose us to toxins in the fish. The good news is that there are plenty of algae-based omega-3 supplements. And if you'd rather source your omega-3s from plants, there's more good news. A plant-based omega-3 fat called ALA has been shown to decrease the risk of fatal heart disease. You can get plenty of ALA from flaxseed, chia seeds, hemp seeds, walnuts and rapeseed oil. The bottom line is, omega-3s are essential, but getting them from fish is neither necessary nor is it good for you. Both freshwater and ocean fish live in waters polluted by industrial and agricultural residues, drugs, water products and similar nasty substances. Fish naturally accumulate heavy metals such as mercury, cadmium, lead and pesticide residues in their fatty tissues. And that's why we're being warned against eating too much fish. As a vague precaution, pregnant women and small children are told not to eat more than two servings of oily fish a week, but that's not all. They are also told to avoid eating shark, swordfish or marlin, because these accumulate more mercury and their consumption could damage a developing baby's nervous system. The toxic cocktail fish contain can cause a range of serious health issues, from nerve damage to impaired vision and liver damage. Just to illustrate that no matter where in the world you go, the issue remains the same. Here are some recent studies. One from the United States shows that both locals and newcomers face serious issues resulting from fish consumption. Another from South America states how nobody really knows what's in the fish that got caught in their waters. And then there's the worrying study from Italy about pesticides, residues and heavy metals. Shellfish accumulate pollutants as well as fish do, but because shellfish are bottom feeders, a lot of stuff you may not want to eat ends up in their flesh and organs. On top of that, they don't expel waste as well as other animals do, so by eating them, you eat their own feces too. And if that isn't exactly appetizing, add to it that most shellfish and oysters in particular are contaminated with norovirus. Yes, that's the vomiting, diarrhea-inducing bug. A recent survey found that 69% of oysters carried norovirus. And if you're wondering why shellfish are so contaminated, another study has a clear answer. So human waste is polluting the waters where shellfish live. They're inevitably eating some of it, get infected with the virus, and give it back to us when we eat them. Hepatitis E is a virus targeting the liver. If you get infected, it can cause fever, fatigue, nausea, joint pain and yellow tinted skin and eyes. It's not very common in developed countries, but outbreaks do happen and they're often linked to the consumption of contaminated shellfish. This study illustrates the situation really well. Commercial fishing decimates the oceans and most fish populations are now collapsing. The official figures say that 90% of fish stocks are depleted. Discarded nets and fishing gear are also one of the main plastic pollutants in the oceans, accounting for 46% of all plastic trash in the seas and killing more and more sea life that gets entangled in the nets. And fish farms are not the answer either. About 50% of fish contaminated worldwide comes from farms that hold huge number of fish in close quarters. 
Diseases and fish parasites are thriving in these environments, so the overuse of antibiotics, antiparasitics and pesticides thrown in the water as a cure is mind-blowing. But that's not where it ends. Fish farms also increase the pressure on wild fish populations. Whichever way we look at it, eating fish is far from harmless. It's neither healthy nor sustainable, and it hurts too. Fish do feel pain, and research has also revealed they're extremely sensitive to pressure. So any kind of fishing subjects them to suffering in multiple ways. It's time to leave fish in the water and get our omega-3s from flaxseed, chia and hemp seeds, walnuts, rapeseed oil or algae supplements. It turns out it's not just more ethical and sustainable, it's also healthier for us too.